Splines are useful to be able to generate correlations from data. Here we have on the right, we have some data. If we just draw a line through it, through all the points uh, or close to that, we'll have something that approximates those points with a function. And so we want to generate something over that entire region that has continuous first and second derivatives. You know, we could do something like just linear approximations between them, but then you have points that don't work well with gradient-based solvers. So I'm going to generate a cubic spline so that we'll be able to use that function in a search algorithm uh, within perhaps a larger model. So let's go ahead and first of all just take our data here and we'll go ahead and plot uh, xm and ym and we'll just make those blue circles and plot that uh, here if you don't forget to add in some of these, uh, you know, import some of these packages that are listed right here for NumPy and Matplotlib. Okay, the next thing we'll do is uh, generate a cubic spline, and then uh, we'll also seek to find the maximum or minimum value of that cubic spline. So let's do that with Gecko. We're going to first of all need to import Gecko. So we'll do from Gecko import gecko and then we'll do m equals uh, gecko to create a new model. The next thing that we need to do is set up some variables. We want to just be able to display the cubic spline, see how it looks. And so I'm going to create a new parameter. Okay, I'm going to name this m.x uh, so I don't have confused the namespace. I'll be generating another cubic spline later. So I'll take that and make it a parameter. And then I'm going to set the value equal to linearly spaced values between one, negative 1 and 6. And uh, so I have a range of values that I want to be able to plug into that. And then here is my result. And then I'll generate my cubic spline with uh, m dot x and m dot y and then I'll put in the data xm and ym. Okay so the very first two are the the variables that you want and then these two are going to be your data. Next we'll solve it and I'll set display equals false just so we don't see the solver output. The other thing that we need to do is just set one option and set I mode equal to 2. By default, it's equal to 3, which is uh, steady state optimization, but that one allows us to do multiple data points with one solve. Okay, and then what we'll do is just add that to the plots. So let me go ahead and label this. These are the uh, label is data, and then we'll create another one that is going to be equal to m dot x and m dot y and we'll make that a red dashed line and set the label equal to a red uh, sorry label is equal to cubic spline okay let's uh, generate that let's see what it looks like once it finishes solving here we just had the gecko import and then we had our cubic spline that was generated. And you can see that we have a maximum value there right about uh, you know 4.5 or so and so we'll use an optimizer to find the maximum value of that in that cubic spline region. The other thing you have to watch out for is extrapolation error. So let's say I went out to 8 instead and then you'll be able to see that it's going to okay it's going to extrapolate not quite as well here. Okay, if I want to speed up the solution, if I'm on uh, Windows computer, then I can do remote equals false, and then it's going to go a lot faster. Okay, so you can see the extrapolation error can be a problem, and so we might need to add some bounds to that if we're going to be optimizing. Okay, so let's uh, set up another problem. We just plotted with the 50 different data points our cubic spline. And so I'm going to create another one, which is going to be equal to P. I'm just going to name a different model. And then P.X is going to be M.Param. And I'll just set, give it a single value. I'll give it a guess value of 1. You could even leave that off if you wanted to. 
and this one actually I'm gonna make that a variable instead of a parameter so it's calculated I'll just leave off the value for that one and I need to change these to p dot okay I'll do p dot c spline and this one is going to be p dot x and p dot y those are the two points I have where I want to be able to calculate the cubic spline and then I have my data points okay and then this one's going to be uh, p dot solve and I'll do display equals false okay now as I mentioned before we need to do some lower bounds and upper bounds I'll just set that equal to the lower limit you know zero and the upper bound equal to five so that's the limit of where my data is valid so I'll just set some lower and upper bounds for that okay now we're gonna go ahead and optimize but we need an objective function we need to tell it you know where uh, what we want to maximize or minimize so let's go ahead and minimize uh, first of all p dot y so we'll find the minimum of that and then we'll plot this one so we'll just add a new point to the plot, p dot x and p dot y, and we'll make that a black circle, and we'll call that minimum. Okay, so this one is the minimum down there. You can see it found in that range of 0 to 5, it found the minimum value. And then if we want to change that to maximum, okay, then we just minimize the negative of that. And also set this to remote equals false as well. Okay, so now it found the maximum right here at the very top. You can see a little black uh, circle there. And so there's the maximum in that region. If we leave out these lower and upper bounds, then it might go off to a very large number. As you can see right there, it went off to 2,000 something. Uh, basically, it, uh, there's some extrapolation error there. So we want to avoid that, just include these bounds on where the data is valid. And then we can generate a cubic spline and be able to use that correlation in an optimization problem. Okay, so I'll run it one more time. And just to show uh, the final plot there with the cubic spline. So this is just one of 18 different example problems. If you'd like to see more of them, there's also documentation as well. Here's the 18. We just did number four um, in this video list. And you can see the solutions as well from this link. Here's the solutions to all the problems that we're going to be going through. You can also get to it... Um, Okay, so here are all the solutions here. And you can also get to it, just search for AP Monitor Gecko. And I put it here on, okay, this page right here. Okay, with all the source code. And so this is number four. And so you can see the source code for that right here.